So here is what happened over the past few days. A documentary Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, was released and revealed predatory and exploiting actions of adult writers, producers and actors towards child stars like Ariana Grande, Amanda Bynes and others. Super disturbing allegations came to light. Then Dan Schneider, the creator of those shows, who we see in the documentary being inappropriate with kids and writing scenes that make your skin crawl, he basically said, sorry, not sorry, gaslighting the audience and claiming it's the modern adults that look at innocent movie scenes and make it into something dirty. We also learn about the actual grape of Drake Bell by one of the adult cast members, Brian Peck. And then one of the kids stars mother came out recently defending Dan Schneider, saying it's all parents fault, not the predators, the parents. So let me walk you through it all. The world seems to be at that very disturbing stage, the specific moment in time where we really want to expose the bad, the ugly, the sick, the creepy. Most of all, what we see today are big names in Hollywood being exposed as child predators. But because they are so open about being sickos, they are, and because they are using public platforms to indulge in their sick practices, part of the world got tricked into thinking this was normal, that it was okay. The awakening we are going through today makes us question stuff that went under the radar in the past and are being called out today. Just assume everything I say here is alleged, although we will be looking at all the receipts together. Quiet on set documentary brings up so many disturbing events or moments from the kids' shows where popular child stars like Ariana Grande, Amanda Bynes, Jamie Lee Spears, Drake Bell, and many others had to go through. Here is a clip that summarizes the whole thing. This is why I'm in Hollywood. Yeah, eat your cereal, kids. This is Dan Schneider, the producer behind hit Nickelodeon shows like The Amanda Show, iCarly, and Zoe 101, to name just a few. The kids' TV show Powerhouse was subject to numerous investigations of abuse, sexual misconduct, and inappropriate behavior while overseeing these shows, and was finally let go from Nickelodeon in 2018. Now, a two-part docuseries investigating Schneider's alleged abuse, titled Quiet on Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV, is premiering on Investigation Discovery on March 17th. There was a toxic environment. It's a house of horrors. I've been waiting 17 years for today. Schneider, a former child actor, began as a writer on Nickelodeon in 1993 on the sketch comedy show All That. Eventually, this led to the hit The Amanda Show, which cemented him as a wonder kid for the network, helping push Nickelodeon to a $10 billion a year success. As early as 2000, a writer on The Amanda Show was investigated as part of a gender discrimination and hostile workplace claim. Though Schneider was not specifically named, it's heavily intonated this will be explored in Quiet on Set. Both Jeanette McCurdy and Ariana Grande complained about a producer on the show Sam and Cat in 2013, and it was determined Schneider contributed to toxicity on set. Finally, Viacom CBS, Nickelodeon's parent company, launched another investigation in late 2017 and early 2018 into Schneider's alleged sexual behavior, but found no evidence of sexual misconduct. However, it was concluded he could be verbally abusive. To some, it felt as if Schneider's behavior was an open secret. Alexa Nicholas, who starred in Zoe 101, began making allegations against Schneider and by proxy Nickelodeon starting in 2018. Nicholas maintains the network knew about Schneider's behavior and did nothing. I remember Dan Schneider like at every single wardrobe fitting for me. Oh my God. To the point where he would sit in the chair and I would come out, I would do a spin and then he would look at the wardrobe artist and say, can I have the Polaroids? As allegations continued, the sexual undertones of some clips Schneider had produced or written have come under scrutiny. For example, it was common for actors like Ariana Grande to be put in compromising or suggestive positions, showing their feet or even putting them in their mouths or saying things that could be seen as suggestive. Ah, I'm soaking wet! Schneider denies any allegations, and a representative from Nickelodeon told Insider that the child actors' guardians were always on set and each episode was reviewed by their standards and practices team. In 2021, Schneider told the New York Times he was working on other projects, some more focused on adults, and another for kids and their families. He told the Times, whatever I do next, I want it to outdo what I've done in the past. Yes, the clip of Ariana Grande we just saw, or Schneider sitting with little Amanda Bynes in the hot tub, who he apparently was weirdly obsessed with, that's just the tip of a huge iceberg. To stay organized here in this insane mess, I'm going to use this Los Angeles Times article to guide me. The headline reads, Quiet on set, the dark side of kids' TV, six key takeaways from the documentary. The first allegation is, 
Schneider's female employees allege he discriminated against them. Yes, so the women speaking out in the documentary claimed that Schneider made them do degrading things in order for them to keep their jobs. They were underpaid and harassed daily on set and backstage. Second allegation, child actors were asked to perform risque material and gross dares. Yes, things in, the, in this part get very disturbing and inappropriate. Consider yourself warned. In Quiet On Set, numerous colleagues and former cast members alleged that Schneider tested boundaries by writing off-color jokes and creating provocative visual gags that were clearly out of place on a show aimed at and starring children. In one of the more stark examples, he created a character called Penelope Tynd, as in the body slang term for the perineum, who was played by Bynes on The Amanda Show. Here is an example of the effed up dares the kids on the show had to perform. Look at that first dare, Barcelona, Alabama. You're on the dare show. Hi, Sharon. I dare you to brush your teeth with your brother's big toe. <laughs> No way! His toes are disgusting! No kidding! My toenail has fungus on it! I'm not gonna brush my teeth with his toe! But I dare you! Right! Wimpy? What was that? Wimpy? 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 I am so not wimpy! Wimpy! Wimpy? Wimpy? All right! I'll do it! Give me your toe! Some people say that Nickelodeon in general was one big foot fetish party and the writers used every possible chance to have kids bare feet in the show. But this? This is just vile. The article continues. The series also shows footage of other scenes from Schneider's shows and clips he uploaded to the web in which underage actors were inappropriately sexualized including a sequence in which future pop superstar Ariana Grande douses herself in water while laying upside down off the side of a bed and another in which she attempted to milk a potato by squeezing it with both hands. You heard that right. And here is that innocent scene. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. <sighs> That era Nickelodeon? Come on! Give up the juice! Yikes! I'm thirsty! In another video, Ariana's pouring water on herself in what seems like a very sexual manner. And people started saying, this feels inappropriate for children. You think? I would assume, or I would hope, there was at least one adult on set that would go, guys, something is not right here. Those are kids. This is too far. It's sad that it went through so many rounds of approval from writing, reading, filming, editing, and then airing. There were so many chances for someone to go, guys, we are crossing a line here. Unfortunately, that's not all. The article also says, all that cast member Leon Frierson also recalled wearing a costume in character as a superhero named Noseboy, whose costume had a phallic looking nose on each shoulder and who sneezed clear snot all over a female cast member's face. And yes, I'm going to show you that clip as well. There is a reason I'm bringing it all up right now. I need you to be fully aware how bad this thing was and allegedly still is. The leotards. I mean, I was just a growing boy trying to, you know, fit into my body. It was just out there for everyone to kind of look at and judge me or, you know, I just felt very exposed. So one week we get a script, there's a new character for me on all of that named Noseboy. Naturally, I'm in a superhero costume, which is just tights and underwear. You know, what was different about this, they, they gave me a prosthetic nose, like an enlarged nose. And they put this same nose on the costume. I can't do this nose! What are your special powers? You can't help but notice that it looks like penis and testicles on my shoulders. This is a child playing this role, and he's playing it for other children. His audience is kids as young as six. I'm allergic to asteroids! <laughs> and 
And the joke in that sketch is effectively a shot joke. It's a shot joke for children. I'm just looking back at it. It's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. Yes. Similar scene was done with Jamie Lee Spears. Equally unnecessary and disturbing. Have a look. Hey, Zoe, come over here. You gotta taste this. They're awesome. How do I open it? Oh, easy. Right at the tip. Then you just squeeze. Wait, it's not coming out. It came out. Here, I have another goop off. I don't know why the other one squirted out like that. All I do is squeeze a little like this. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Obvious. It's all in the open. It's all shameless. It's like the predators are having a contest. Who can get away with more in the public eye? And it seems like they are getting away with almost everything. Even when the evidence is there. Even when the public calls it out. Even when victims speak. Nothing happens. Anyway, here is another main allegation from the documentary. A Nickelodeon crew member described himself as a pedo, full-blown. The alleged pedo here is Jason Handy, who was a crew member on The Amanda Show. And all that. He was caught sending inappropriate images of himself to 9 and 11-year-olds from the cast. His house was raided and they discovered crazy amount of CP and so on. But nothing could have prepared us for this next allegation and the interview of Drake Bell who reveals he was the child abused by Brian Peck. Peck, who had worked as an actor and dialogue coach on a number of Schneider-created shows, including All That and The Amanda Show, was convicted of child abuse in 2004. At the time, the identity of Peck's victim, described as a child actor, remained unknown. So let me show you this clip. I was sleeping on the couch where I would usually sleep, and, and uh, I woke up to him I, I opened my eyes, I woke up, and he was, uh, he was a And I froze and was in complete shock and had no idea what to do or how to react. You know, he's so apologetic. Oh, this will never happen again. I'm so sorry. You know, that I, I don't know what got into me, and, and, and I, I crossed the line, and, I, and this will never happen again. He figured out how to uh, convince my mom and everyone around to have me, you know, anytime I would have an audition or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything. Somehow I ended up back at Brian's house. I really don't know how to uh, elaborate on that on, on camera, really. Why don't you think of the worst stuff that someone can do to somebody as a And that'll answer your question. It was not a one-time thing. It was not a oops. I, no, it is, I mean, I, uh. You know how when we hear stories like this, we immediately call for justice, for some type of punishment, but it's never enough. When Drake Bell and other children had to suffer, it's just tragic. Forgive me if I get a bit more worked up in this episode. You know, I've been speaking on this subject a lot on my channel. This is something I get super angry about because yes there were predators on set for those Nickelodeon shows yes the kids were in danger yes they were put in impossibly inappropriate situations by strangers but where were the parents where were the parents and let's not pretend a good parent wouldn't see it happening wouldn't find anything wrong if you let your kid out of your sight letting them spend one-on-one -on -one time with shifty adults or watch their shows seeing these disturbing scenes and you continue letting them participate in this perverted circus, then that's on you. You are guilty of exploiting and not protecting your child. 100%. And by the way, if you don't know who Brian Peck is, you actually might be familiar with his son, Josh Peck. Younger generations might know him from TikTok. Hey, you having a good day? Yeah? How about now? So him and Darren Bell, who was a victim of Josh's father, they had a show together. They were co-stars when they were kids. To us, they are known from the show Drake and Josh from 2004 to 2007. Anyway, the audience started to call out Josh for not speaking publicly about newly found information about his predatory dad. But Drake Bell went online and confirmed that Josh, in fact, reached out to him in private and they were discussing things. Messed up situation. Of course, there are many more things in the documentary. There are 
four episodes of it and I recommend you watch it. I did a short rundown of what people were the most outraged about and what is now the most discussed on the internet. So now that you have a pretty good idea of what's been said in the documentary and what Dan Schneider and his business buddies are being accused of, I want to show you what he had to say to all that. Variety wrote, Dan Schneider denies raising child stars on Nickelodeon. Some adults project their adult minds onto kids' shows. So yes, guys, we are the problem. We are looking at something innocent and making it worse than it seems. Just listen to what else he had to say in his defense. And how are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. I really appreciate you reaching out and giving me the opportunity to talk to you about the, what we saw over the last two nights. I'm really glad you're here because I believe this is important. For sure. Uh, we've got a lot of things to unpack. Um, but before I dive into my list of topics that I'd like to discuss, is there anything you'd like to start off with? Absolutely. Watching over the past two nights was very difficult. Me facing my past behaviors, some of which are embarrassing and that I regret. And I definitely owe some people a pretty strong apology. Let's talk about the massages. Okay. Watching the content yesterday, it was disturbing. It was wrong. It was wrong that I ever put anybody in that position. It was the wrong thing to do. I'd never do it today. I'm embarrassed that I did it then. I apologize to anybody that I ever put in that situation. And even additionally, I apologize to the people who were walking around Video Village or wherever they happened because there were lots of people there who witnessed it who also may have felt uncomfortable. So I owe them an apology as well. Yeah. So he's being interviewed by Boogie, who played Tebow on iCarly, who seems to either take on the role of someone who believes Schneider to be innocent in order to make him comfortable to speak on the subject, or he genuinely wanted to give him a platform to defend himself. Either way, this was a poor piss apology. It means nothing at this point, and it really seems this guy has no interest in how much damage he caused. To me, he's saying, reciting what his publicist would want him to say, but he is not remorseful. He wants it to just go away. He sees it as an inconvenience. This is how this whole interview reads to me. I'll link the full video in the description for you guys so you can watch and let me know what you think. But my questions here are, why apologizing is even an option right now? Why isn't their official investigation reopened? Why is he just sitting there as if he was apologizing for oversalting a soup? Someone said, he declined being on the quiet on set documentary. So this is extremely calculated PR just to apologize enough and talking to someone who won't ask the things that could incriminate him to avoid more trouble. And this one, facts. Unfortunately, this is smart because the way he's perceiving is forgivable, but realistically, he should be jailed for many, many years and pay a lot of money. This one says, my flabber is all the way gusted because why are you even talking to him? I'm thinking the same thing. Are we in Matrix? No way this is real. And this one, all I hear is, I'm sorry, I got caught. I always said that if you go after kids, you are a special type of evil. There is no excuse. And in my humble opinion, this type of humans can't be rehabilitated. Once a child molester, always a child molester. Those things don't change. Those urges, this mind sickness, it doesn't go away. This is what I believe. You can't just get a clean slate after hurting a child like that. And speaking of shitty parents, as if everything I spoke about already wasn't enough, there are parents of the child stars of Nickelodeon that defend Dan Schneider. Can you freaking believe it? Look at this headline. Mother of Zoe 101, that's so Raven actors, defends Dan Schneider. Blame the parents, not Dan. The article says, Angel Mazzi, the mother of former child actors Kyle Mazzi, I think Mazzi or Macy, that's so Raven and Christopher Macy, Mazzy, Zoe 101, is defending ex-Nickelodeon executive Dan Schneider in the midst of the fallout from investigation discoveries quiet on set, the four-part docuseries detailing alleged abuses and toxic workplace behaviors that took place at the Children's Network during the 90s and 2000s. You are awesome. You are a genius. Maisie wrote in an Instagram story on Wednesday over an image of Schneider at the Kids' Choice Awards. I can't thank this guy enough for the opportunity he gave my son and my family. Blame the parents, not Dan. So this woman, knowing that kids were hurt and exploited, allegedly, by this guy and his friends on set, goes ahead and posts 
an Insta story that says, I can't thank this guy enough for the opportunities he gave my son and my family. This is what she has to say. Blame the parents, not done. See, I'm glad that her boys didn't experience what other kids did. And yes, let's hold parents responsible, but let's not praise the guy who was massaging kids on set. Let's not praise the guy who made the set of Nickelodeon a playground for, for predators. That's not all. This woman then went ahead and posted this on Instagram. Pick a color. For all the flies that flew to this page, I have only one thing to say. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Well, her handle on Instagram is the fit celebrity mom. That tells me everything about who she is. Probably even if her kids would go through something traumatic, she wouldn't notice over her own ego or she would turn a blind eye for fame's sake. Here are some comments on her post. Being a grown-ass woman and acknowledging that children were assaulted by still but still blaming them is the devil's work. God bless you. Another one, you need to get back on your meds, ma'am. And this one, you're a part of the problem, old hag. <laughs> and meanwhile, your other son was in jail for the same thing. How ironic. Wow, that's why she's okay with it. She should have been out here raising him correctly. There was also this comment. You support him touching and massaging on kids and getting Amanda Bynes pregnant? Oh, okay. Yes. So, there were rumors for the longest time about Amanda Bynes getting pregnant, allegedly, with Dan Schneider's baby when she was just 13 years old and having to terminate the pregnancy. Another rumor said that Jamie Lee Spears' kid was also Schneider's. She also was a teenager when she got pregnant. Those rumors have been around for the longest time, never confirmed, but given the recent revelations, much more believable now. I'm expecting Quiet On Set might inspire more victims to speak out in the near future, so I'll be keeping an eye out for you guys for any updates on this story. Right now, what I see happening is people urging Amanda Bynes and Ariana Grande to speak out and comment on all this. I think these people need to chill. If they were in fact hurt by those men, they deserve the right to take their time, to decide if they want to reveal it. Maybe they have some crazy contracts and NDAs signed that could harm them legally. We don't know and we all should back off. But as usual, I want to know what you guys think. Have you seen the documentary? What was your reaction? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications to never miss another Daily Fredo episode. And for even more content, check out my Patreon linked in the description and follow me on Instagram at Daily Fredo. That's all for today. Have a good one.